Hello and welcome to our daily service. This whole week we're thinking about God as the great creator. And today our theme is God's creation of human beings in his image. I begin with some words from Genesis chapter 1. God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Loving Father, we praise you as the creator of the universe. And we ask, please open our eyes to understand more what it means to be made in your image. And please send us out into this day and into this week, determined to live as we should, reflecting your glory. For Jesus' sake. Amen. In Psalm 8, David praises God for the amazing dignity and privilege he has given human beings within his creation. And we're going to say together the opening verses of that psalm. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. Yesterday we read the beginning of Genesis chapter 1 and we were reminded of God's creation of the whole of the universe. For the next three days our focus is on God's creation of human beings. And today we're just going to read two verses from Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. A student arrived at university and received a communication from the Department of Administration. It began like this. Dear A12974Y, we take a personal interest in you. Well, it often doesn't feel like it, does it? We can feel like a statistic, lost in the vast immensity of the universe, amongst billions in the world. We're nobodies, but we're not to God. He takes a genuine, personal interest in each one of us. We've been made in his image, in his likeness, as the Bible puts it. And that gives us amazing dignity and value. We might not feel very valuable. Perhaps we sense that society rather looks down on us. Our face doesn't fit. We don't have the qualities that it values. We feel put down. Or perhaps we put ourselves down. We've got low self-esteem. It may be that it's got worse over the last few weeks. We've become unemployed. Or we've been furloughed. Or we're officially working, but at the end of the day, we feel we've got nothing done, or very little. We feel useless. Or we spend hours looking at that screen, and everyone else looks so beautiful. They look as if they're so interesting, so popular, and by comparison, we feel worthless. But we're not. We've been made in the image and likeness of God. And what is true of us individually, having great value, is true of everyone else. And there's no excuse for any behaviour or attitude that looks down on others as if they're insignificant, they're inferior. No, every single person has dignity. And that is why, of course, racism is such a terrible evil. Now, we're all on a level, a very high level, in the image of God. It's true of male 
and female, rich and poor, young and old, born and unborn. Everyone, whatever their race, whatever their background, whatever their sexuality, whatever their personality, people of great dignity, made in the image and likeness of God. It gives us our dignity. It also gives us a purpose in life. We're designed not to bring glory to ourselves, but as God's image to reflect him for his glory. In Winchester Cathedral, there's a wonderful ceiling. And as you look up at it, you can just make out the stone sculptures up there. They're amazing. But it doesn't take long before the neck is really strained. It's hard work looking up. And the cathedral authorities know how hard it is, and so very kindly, they've placed mirrors just below eye level. And as you look down, you can see reflected the wonders that are above. You don't spend hours admiring the mirrors. That's not the purpose. They're designed to reflect the wonder of the ceiling, that you might see its splendour. And in the same way, we human beings made in the image of God are not designed to draw attention to ourselves, although we often live like that. No, our purpose is to reflect, reflect God's glory for his great praise. A wonderful dignity, a great purpose as those who have been made in the image and likeness of God. But so often we don't treat others as people of dignity. And so often we don't live for God's glory. We live for our own. And that's why we need to confess now. We're going to confess our sins by saying these words together. O oh God, you have taught us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We humbly confess our sins to you and we ask you to keep your promise to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Adam's sin dragged humanity down, but Christ's obedience on the cross has raised us up so that we're forgiven if we trust in him. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you for forgiveness in Christ and for the gift of the Holy Spirit to enable us to change. Keep us truly grateful. Amen. We'll continue in prayer. We begin with a prayer for the transforming work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. O Lord Jesus Christ, by whose death upon the cross the members of your body also die to slavery, to sin. By your Holy Spirit, give us the power to put to death our sinful natures, so that more and more we are transformed into your likeness, while we wait for the new creation, when we will be perfectly restored to your image. And we pray for your name's sake. Amen. Now a prayer against racism and discrimination. O Heavenly Father, whose love embraces all the nations upon earth, deliver us, we pray, from racial prejudice and pride, from the desire to dominate, from injustice to others, and from the denial of their human dignity as people made in your image. Look with compassion on all who suffer from discrimination, and by the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, draw together in true fellowship people of all races and languages, that sharing one another's burdens and work working together in love, we may fulfil your purpose and set forward your everlasting kingdom. And we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our song tells the story of humanity, from creation, then to the fall, and then wonderfully to restoration in Christ. It's a song that will be new to some, so do feel free just to listen, but join in once you've got the tune.
Let's delight today in the amazing dignity we have as those who've been made in God's image. And let's pray for God's help to live for his glory. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and those we love, both now and forevermore. Amen.